It's my pleasure today to be talking to Peter Carnes, incoming parliamentarian, IACP, and chief of police of Stonehill College. Pete, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure right. to be here. You say that now. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're here to talk about officer safety and wellness. And yes, we were I talking am. specifically about suicide prevention for yes. law enforcement officers. Tell me about that program. Suicide prevention has been a uh, long-term priority for IACP. Mm. And in the Center for uh, Officer Safety and Wellness, it's been an important part of that. And we recognize the number of officers that we feloniously kill in the country annually. Uh, recently, FBI statistics showed 51 officers were feloniously killed in the performance of their duty. Uh, we expect those numbers to be uh, probably 10 times that, uh, closer to 500 of officers who died from suicide. Wow. So IACP makes a major priority on fitness for duty, and it's the total officer. It's not just for the men and women that patrol our streets on duty, but it's for when they're off duty, uh, making sure that their mental health issues are addressed, uh, making sure they have an area where they can go and seek help and uh, the department's uh, administrators have to pay attention to that. Do you find that there is maybe a stigma related to suicide? Officers might not be so willing to ask for a little help when they need it? No question. Uh, officers uh, do, uh, uh, just by the nature of the work, uh, the bravado that's involved mm -hmm. or their problem solvers, and occasionally it's very difficult for them to admit they have a problem or seek help to solve their problem. And it's, it's difficult for them to do that. Tell me a bit about uh, Safe Shield, the program with IACP. Uh, IACP started Project Safe Shield. It came from the SACOP division, which is the state associations of uh, uh, chiefs of police. And it started in the year 2000. And the, it had lofty goals when it started. It was a program that was totally committed to officer safety, to get into best practices, policies, and at the time, the foundation of it was having a zero tolerance for any injury or death of a police officer in the country. Uh, and speaking to that, unfortunately, I understand there's a lot of injuries and deaths related to vehicular crashes. Officers may be yes, distracted by, behind the wheel, maybe not using their seatbelt, speeding to the scene. What are the programs there to, to help officers with that? IACP, in partnership with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, have been very aggressive in asking police departments to support model policies that require officers to wear their seat belts. And it's shocking that uh, you know we hear that public safety professionals are not wearing seat belts, but that has been the case for many years. And why do you think that is? Are they in a hurry to get to a scene? How uh, there's been a variety of answers, and uh, administrators uh, have been asked to supervise for safety, sure. make sure officers wear their seat belts, and Constantly, we're reminding officers with videos, with roll call training, uh, the overall importance of the officer wearing his or her seatbelt. Some will argue that it's bulky, it's it's cumbersome with the equipment that they wear. Yeah. But in reality, it's another life-saving tool for an officer. Now, speak to the holistic approach that you have as far as officer wellness, not just the physical wellness, yes. as you said, but also mental health. That's mental an health part is very of it. important for police officers. And the reason being is there's a lot of uh, factors that enter into the life of a police officer and, and we look at work schedule, we look at dietary habits, we look at uh, just life in general uh, of being a police officer. And obviously they're challenged many times by the events that they respond to. Uh, they have difficulties they have to deal with in society. And uh, basically in most communities in America, your police department is the only social service agency open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So our men and women are on the front line, they're out there, they're seeing some of the problems in society and they have to deal with that. Yeah. And then when they go off duty and go home, they have to deal with what they dealt with. And bottom line, I'm assuming you want officers to know help is available, it's out Help there. is available. Uh, IACP takes uh, officer safety very serious. They also take officer safety and wellness real serious. And uh, any man or woman in our profession uh, whether it's a uh, patrol officer or a uh, chief administrator, supervisor, anybody can access our web page, get information uh, going to uh, the Office of Safety and Wellness page, and get more information on taking care of our men and women. All right, sounds great. Great information. Thank you, Pete Carnes, for your you. time. Thank you. Pleasure to be here.